There's nothing like a Twitter event to incentivize me to share hardware stories with my friends. In this video, we use an Intel RapidCAD to build the slowest 486 ever and participate on the 486 build off, an event started by my friend Patrick from the OCR YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know that when it comes to 486s, my go to system is the Rust Bucket 486. The system uses an AMD AM5X86 that in theory is a 486, but it's clocked at 160 MHz, so it gets pretty close to early Pentiums in some tasks. As much as I enjoy my fast 486, it's only a small part of the range of 486 CPUs that start at 25 MHz and go all the way to 133. So today we go from one extreme to the other and venture into the world of what barely classifies as a 486. So we start with a 386 motherboard, but of course this is a 486 build off, so we need a 486 CPU. And this is where the Rapid CAD comes in. This is a transition CPU for people that wanted to upgrade their system but didn't want to buy a whole new computer. It's basically a 486 in a 386 body. The major difference between the 386 and the 486 is that the L1 cache and the floaty point unit are internal in the 486 and external on the 386. Because the Intel Rapid CAD uses a 386 motherboard, it doesn't have internal cache, and the biggest advantage is the internal FPU. Now to the bad news and the reason why there's a possibility my project doesn't work out. The RapidCAD upgrade consists of two chips. One is the CPU and the other is a dummy chip that goes on the 387 socket where the external FPU is supposed to be in a 386. And it tells the motherboard that this FPU is internal to the CPU so we can route the instructions over there. Problem is, I never got that dummy chip. Only the main RapidCAD unit came to be in my possession. My hopes are that the system will function like an SX486 that doesn't have a floating point unit anyway. The motherboard I'm using has a very common problem of a leaky battery. Luckily this motherboard wasn't too corroded by it. The old batteries were made from nickel cadmium and besides being extremely corrosive, they have toxic elements. So anytime you see a motherboard with one of those, you're better off just cutting them out right away. I ordered some replacement cells, these are nickel metal hydride, they don't have toxic components and are pretty rare to leak. I like these because they fit exactly where the old one was and I think they look cool too. So I'm using a pretty common and reliable Sears Logic video card. It uses the ISA bus of course, the motherboard is full ISA slots and nothing else, so that'll have to do. I'm also using an SD to ID adapter along with the controller card. After getting a few lockups while trying to start the system, I decided to go into the BIOS and I found an option to skip the FPU check while the system is booting. Very important since we don't have one. Furthermore, Susan, I found that this motherboard has a jumper that tells it if there is an FPU installed or not. So when I shorted that jumper, to my surprise, the system started working perfectly. So to answer some of your guys' questions, Yes, the RapidCAD works without the dummy unit, the RapidCAD 2. Alright, now that everything is working, it's time to get this case in a better state and install a sound card. I wanted to go with something different, so I tried the Aztec modem sound card combo, but it refused to work in any level. Normal thing here in Retroland. So I went back to the other oldest sound card I have, the trusty Creative Sound Blaster 16. I do wish I had an older card for the system, maybe an 8-bit sound card, but that's something for the future. Moving on to benchmarks, of course we have Phil's Computer Lab Benchmark Suite. And starting with SpeedSys, we see where the 386 base system poses limitations like in memory bandwidth. A fast 486 gets close to 100 megabytes per second, and we are at a fourth of that. But down in the CPU section, we can see that the system performs in between a 386DX40 and a 486DX50. So, kind of what I expected, an extremely slow 486. As for games, let's start with Wolfenstein 3D. First try, I was running this with Turbo Off, and it was a bit slow and I was so disappointed. But turns out the RapidCAD runs it alright after I set it up right. 
Wolf 3D was developed by ID Software back in 1992. This game was inspired by another game called Castle Wolfenstein. I had no clue about this until I researched for this video, but yeah, nice to know where it came from. Anyway, everybody knows Wolfenstein 3D, great MIDI music, very polished, and also a game that introduced most people of my age to first person shooters. Next we have Blake Stone. It was released in December of 1994 and it's made with the same engine of Wolfenstein, but it's got improvements, tiles are more complex, it's clearly more demanding as it gets very choppy on the system. I played this game a lot on my original 46. It was an SX 33MHz, but unfortunately I don't remember much of the way the performance was. That was back in 1995. Something cool in this game is that there are good guys and bad guys scattered around. The scientists with the white jacket can be infiltrated agents or not. Sometimes they start shooting at you immediately, sometimes they don't until you try to talk to them. But if they're good, they, they'll give you a food token or something like that. Pretty cool mechanic for the time. Doom is Doom, John Carmack's masterpiece released in 1993. At first I thought this 46 would need to run it in a smaller window, and it is more fluid indeed in a smaller window, but it's playable using the full screen too. It's not great, and you have to run it with the low graphics detail option, but good enough for what it is. Ooh, I found a chainsaw. To this day I'm still finding different secrets in Doom. What a great game. Heretic was made with the Doom engine and it's from 1994, so quite a bit ahead of Wolfenstein and Blake Stone. And it's also one we have to run in a smaller viewing window to get playable frame rates. Great game, I still have great memories of it and it achieved great success at the time. Some games still make reference to it as spiritual successors like a Medieval released in 2019. As for improvements over Doom, you can look up and down and there's some inventory manipulation. Also, I think it looks fantastic. I love that when you kill a monster, you can see the ghost flying away. Biomenace was a game released by Apogee in 1993 and they made use of the Commander Keen engine licensed by ID Software. This is a fun little game, I think platformers like this are my favorite and it's in this type of game and era that the slowest 486 ever here shines. Great MIDI music, precise gameplay, colorful, I just love this type of game. Jill of the Jungle was released by Epic Mega Games in 1992, and back in 1992 when I played this game, it was the first time I saw a female protagonist in a video game, which already makes this really cool. I always wondered why I never see the second and third iteration of this game in reviews, and I tried them today. For some crazy reasons, sound effects for each action differ in Jill 1, 2 and 3. And oh my god, is it bad on Jill 2 and 3. Might be a specific bug with the Sound Blaster 16 I'm using. I find that weird, because I think Sound Blaster was sort of the gold standard at the time. But yeah, just terrible sound effects. I completely understand now why everybody only displays the first game. Prince of Persia 2 was released in 1992 as a direct sequel to the original Prince of Persia. It was designed by Jordan Mechner, the same guy that did the original game, but this one wasn't coded by him. I think this game is a bit underrated, I love the colors, I think it has more effort in this sense than the original one. The plot is much of the same, but cooler cutscenes, music, puzzles, great game. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I plan to keep this computer in one piece and work on it further. I still need to figure out the front panel frequency display, as well as I want to get a CD-ROM drive working on it, and also try to get another sound card. I also need to do some maintenance on the 5 and a quarter drive to make sure it works properly. It was a pleasure participating in my friend's Patrick event 
be sure to visit his channel OCR as well as the other videos of the event on the playlist linked in the description. And I'll see you next time.